Hey guys, it's Alex Torelli. Welcome to an episode of The Hand of the Day. Today we're going to discuss the epic last hand of the 2018 World Series of Poker main event and, and give you my anal anal analysis on it and talk about some of the strategies behind this epic hand. So we kick this off with Sin on the button with four, two million, four million blinds with a 500k ante. About even stacks here. 50 big blinds or so with each player. Now Sin opens to two and a half big blinds, which he'd been doing all night. This is his standard open. He's opening here with a lot of hands. And King Jack suited is definitely in contention. A huge hand heads up. You're gonna wanna be opening with this hand as well as a lot more. He makes it 10 million and now it's on Tony Miles. Now he has queen eight offsuit here, which I think personally plays a little bit better as a call. When you're three betting here, you wanna be three betting with hands for value or maybe hands that you can't quite call with here. But I think queen eight is strong enough to profitably call. Now to Miles's credit, he had been three betting quite a bit with a mixed strategy pre-flop and it'd been working really effectively. In fact, if there's one thing I could say that Miles did really, really well, it's he mixed up his game a lot and he used his image to apply selected aggression and throw John Sin for a loop, mainly pre-flop. Sin had not been playing back against Miles's three bets. In fact, I don't think he four bet him a single time in 10 hours of poker. So S Miles had a lot of incentive to three bet with a wide variety of hands because it had been working so well. He'd also been doing something which we don't see that often in poker and he had been sizing his three bets on the large side. Now, while this doesn't give you the best risk reward ratio, what it does is it prevents your opponents from calling in position and playing the pot. So Miles had just been kind of running over Sin in spots like these and picking up a lot of pots uncontested preflop. So I can get behind why he decided to three bet with queen eight in this spot, even though I think long term it's probably better played as a call. Just because of the flow of the match, he'd been wanting to apply aggression and win the hand uncontested. He now goes for a huge three bet to 34, 35 million, which again is over the size of the pot, but it really puts Sin to a tough spot. Sin can't really just call here with weak hands like 9-7 suited, 9-6 suited, which if Miles made it smaller, Sin might peel more flops. So it really puts Sin to a tough spot, kind of saying you can either call with some selected hands or you kind of have to shove or just fold. So I like the three bet sizing from Miles and now it's over to Sin. Now some people here would just jam trying to deny equity from their opponents, but I personally think King Jack suited plays way better as a call. I like calling for two reasons. One is that it keeps your range more balanced. You keep the pot in position, you keep your position in the hand, and you can actually play poker. Playing post flop in position is where you gain an edge, and when you have a hand that plays really well, like King Jack suited, I just like realizing my equity and calling. I don't like shoving because no real better hands are going to fold. If your opponent was three betting for value with something like ace queen or something, he's gonna just call it off. And if he did have a bluff like queen eight, he's just gonna fold. So sure you deny some equity, but you don't really put your opponent in a spot to make a mistake. He's going to play well versus your shove, and you're just kind of hoping he doesn't have it. I'd much rather just call, play the pot in position, and realize my equity that way. So I think this hand plays well as a call. I like Sin's decision to take a flop here, and we go heads up to a 70 million chip pot. I'm not saying that. Mm. Wow. That flop really John Sin with King Jack. Two hearts in there for Miles, if he cares about them. Here comes Miles. He's going to bet 33 million. Miles, da, da, da. Just, Miles <laughs> just raised it to 34 million. Well, he could bet 40. And here it comes. John Sin. I'm surprised he's 4% to win this pot. Can yes. taste this. Heart, heart hit sometimes. There it is. I said 32. It's 32. All right, you said 33. Dang it. Which is a great guess. I thought it's he said 30. 34. No, he Dang said, it. He said 33. He was close. He also said now. million, like Mike the Mouth likes to say. <laughs> if you're John <laughs> Sin on this yeah. King, King 5 flop holding King Jack. Really easy. I like the fact he's 
studying, studying, studying. Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with my ace jack high. What a thing of beauty when the dealers spread those cards for John Sin. Yeah, you've got a guy bluffing at exactly the wrong time. <laughs> and you're sitting on three kings, baby. Okay, I like the fact that he took his time with that call. And, and Look at the pot. Miles knows that he called a big bet before with ace nine of spades. Remember that? Yeah. The last time he went crazy bluffing. The flop comes down king, king, five with two hearts. Tony Miles flops, well, a backdoor flush draw. That's pretty much it. And Sin flops the joint with trips. Good kicker. Now, here's where Miles, I believe, makes a mistake and where I think he had, he had been making mistakes during the night. The one thing I think he could have done a little bit better. First of all, Miles played incredible poker. Like... The only reason he kind of got a little bit outshined by Sin is just because Sin was on like Pluto another level playing world class. But Miles played incredible. And the fact that both of them had said they really didn't play much heads up was truly amazing because they both played like they were world class players. But the one thing that I think Miles could have done differently, especially in spots like these, was his C-bet sizing. He was going three fourths pot or half pot at least in a lot of spots where the board was dry textured. And in a spot like this, when you're 50 big blinds and the pot is huge, you don't really want to bet so big. I think long term, it's better to bet a little bit smaller here just because your opponent is going to react the same way pretty much regardless of what you bet. So whether Sin bets or whether Miles bets, you know, 18 million or 30 million, if Sin has air, it's kind of hard for him to continue regardless given how big the pot size is, right? He can't really bluff raise unless unless he bets like 9 million or something, you know, ridiculous. But any reasonable size bet is going to get this through. Now, I could get behind 33 million. It's kind of like half pot, but I wouldn't even mind seeing a little bit smaller of a bet size on this dry textured of a board. I love the bet. You definitely have to continue here. It's just a small little detail that I might have liked to see uh, in spots like these, him go a little bit smaller with a wider range of hands. That said, to his credit, this strategy actually played pretty well from an exploitative standpoint. Uh, betting bigger did. From a game theory standpoint, betting smaller allows you to bet more hands. It keeps your range wider. But from an exploitative standpoint, Miles was playing these spots pretty well against someone like Sin. I understand why Miles decided to bet bigger here. Because Sin was floating some of the time on flops and Miles doesn't want to bet 18 million and have Sin float and then not know what to do on the turn. So from an exploitative standpoint, I actually like the bigger sizing here and you could kind of see how I'm analyzing it from both standpoints and you really have to use real-time reads to figure out what the best play is. Betting 32 million, although a little bit on the bigger side, doesn't really allow your opponent to float here. It kind of makes it tough. I mean, maybe he can float, but you're really charging him a lot to do so. And when you have queen high like the stone air ball, and you can't really double barrel any turns, you really want to win this pot on the flop. So, in conclusion, I like the bet. I'm, I can get behind the bet size, and... I'm crediting Miles for taking an aggressive line and really hammering in the aggression here on a dry board. You have to continue, and this is a great spot to continue repping strength like he did pre-flop. Miles goes for 32 million, and here Sin has a slam dunk, absolute super clear call. Sin had been floating spots like these earlier on. There was a spot which is exactly the same, and the board came jack 4-3, and Sin called with 8-7. No draw, no back doors. So Sin had been known to float in spots like these. So I think to keep his range balanced, you're gonna definitely wanna call with something like King Jack and allow your opponent rope to either continue bluffing or catch up and just throw your opponent for a loop. I also love that Sin took so long to call this flop. He wants to make it seem like his hand is weaker than it is. Maybe he has a weak flush draw, maybe he has ace high, maybe he has a stone float with queen jack of diamonds, and he's just evaluating what to do. He would tank with all of those hands as well, so I love the tank even though he knows what his decision is when he has king jack. He floats, I and mean, he calls with king jack, and we go heads up to the turn. One third of the chips on the table in play in the middle of the pot right now. Oh, brutal, brutal card. For and Miles. now Miles hits his eight. Oh, that's the last card in the deck that Miles. Oh, All Tournament's in. Tournament's over. Tournament is over. Johnson just has to say call. Count, please. 
to paraphrase Antonio, I can't imagine any version of Johnson this time not calling this all in. He's never folding. I, I, I don't understand. But, Johnson. But, but I like the fact, I, I'll take it back. I like the fact that he's taking his time. He's going to reach the right conclusion probably within the next 15 seconds. 113 and 5. But he has to know that it's not like Miles has just moved in with King Queen. He would have bet a lot less if he had him beat. He's taken his time with every other decision getting to this point. No I like it. To rush it. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, we see that Miles is drawing dead here. It's the main event, you know? Mm, I think if you just had me beat, it's just really gross. A call, and it's over. It is over. The tournament's over. Folks, you can turn off your televisions. It's over. The turn comes in eight of diamonds, and now Miles hits the app. I mean, aside from a queen, this is a really terrible card for him. He he's puts himself in a tough spot by three betting so big pre-flop and using such a big sizing on the flop that there's not much room to play this spot on the turn. He has less than a pot size bet left on the river, and his hand is a favorite to be the best hand. Sure, he's gonna go broke when Sin has a king, but Sin might have something like sevens or sixes or ace five or ace high or a flush draw or a float, which other players can't have floats, but Sin has been known to float in weird spots like this. So it's really hard for Miles to get away from his hand. Now the question is, what is the best way to play it? In my personal opinion, you're gonna go broke pretty much regardless of what you do, but there's a big difference in, in EV between how you play the hand. So if Miles is beat, and he bets all in and Sin calls, he's gonna lose. If he checks and Sin bets and he check jams, he's gonna lose regardless. So the difference in how he plays his hand when he's behind is zero. He's gonna lose all his money regardless. But there's a big difference in what happens when Miles has the best hand. If Miles has the best hand and jams, Sin is pretty much never gonna call with a worse hand. If Sin has a flush draw, he's gonna fold. If Sin has a weaker pair, he's gonna fold. If Sin has ace high, he's also gonna fold. I mean, let's face it, he tanked for over a minute with King Jack, so it's pretty reasonable to say he's not gonna be ever calling with worse. I also don't think that Miles ever gets Sin to fold a better hand. I mean, maybe Sin folds like pocket nines or something like that that didn't jam preflop, but I don't even think he has that. I think he jams with that hand preflop. So, Miles, Sin never really folds a better hand here. Now the case for jamming if you're Miles is that you deny some equity. Like if your opponent has a flush draw, you know, you force him off the draw, you don't let him see a free card. But because Sin is, you know, viable to raise the flop with a flush draw, and because Sin had also been floating so often in spots like these, I think I'm probably gonna check and risk getting giving a free card in hopes that Sin bets. And when he does bet, I would just check jam all in and protect my equity. So I'm going to check here. Sin's probably going to bet with his bluff. He's definitely going to bet with his bluffs. He might bet with, you know, like pocket sixes just to get the showdown. He might bet with ace high and turn it into a bluff. He might jam with a flush draw and then you could call. So I think I would check here, hope that Sin bets like 30 or 40 million, and then I would go all in and deny equity that way. So I think checking here just yields a better result. In the end, he's gonna lose all his money regardless, but I think long term, against a player who's been liable to play loose, like Sin, who'd been aggressive in spots like these, I would check, give him the rope, and play the hand that way. As played, Miles jams it all in, which I still think is fine, I still think it's a profitable jam, and now it's over to Sin, who has a slam dunk, absolute clear call. This is one of the best hands he can have. There's really not much to say about this hand. It's kind of surprising that he tanks so long, but actually, I actually don't mind the tank. I mean, your head's up, you've been playing poker for 12 hours. It's the biggest decision you will ever make in your poker life. Just out of respect for your routine in thinking through a hand, you should think for 30 seconds in every big all-in decision, unless you just have the stone nuts. So I don't mind him tanking here. Some people call it a slow roll. I totally think it's acceptable to think here for a minute. You're, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. In the biggest spot of your life, you're gonna tank. That said, he has an absolute slam dunk clear call, which he does make, and unfortunately, Miles is drawing stone dead all in for the main event title. Sin ends up winning 
credit to both players. They played the best, I think personally, the best heads up match I've ever seen. They both played world-class poker. It is truly amazing to watch. It was really inspiring. Um, I'm really grateful to have watched the match. I'm, I was happy with whoever won. They're both great ambassadors for poker. They both seem like great people. They were having so much fun and smiling. They were thinking fast. They were playing fast. It was just an incredible match from two amazing ambassadors. Congrats to Sin who pulled it off. Well-deserved world-class poker from both players, uh, A plus and um, well-deserved champion. I hope you liked this video. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome content. Leave your thoughts in a comment below. How would you have played this hand? I'd love to hear your thoughts and I will see you guys next time on the hand of the day.